guys and welcome back to another episode of Should You Bake It? I know I'm due for a make it video, but with all of this pumpkin spice and fall in the air, it's just so easy to be doing bake it's than make it's because you have so much of this baking going on um, and all of these reviews with all of the baking. So um, I do have this bake it and another bake it coming up, but I promise next week I will search and find some make it's for you guys. I don't know that I'll be doing pumpkin because Personally, I feel that's a little odd to me. That personal preference, that's just me, my family. I don't think I'll be making any pumpkin pasta anytime soon. I highly doubt they'll touch it. <laughs> so, further ado, um, this review is going to be from Laura Vitale from Laura in the Kitchen. And we'll be doing her fried apple rings, or she also calls them apple donuts. Um, so, it's just me again doing this. Everyone's so busy out running around so it's just me and you guys so we'll have to do what we did last time and you know I'll be manning the camera myself <laughs> see how this goes so I'll bring you over here we'll go over the ingredients I will leave her link down below um, with all of the exact measurements and quantities um, and you can head over to her channel and see the original too and we'll get into this because there's very few ingredients and I was really excited about that one and I know you will too. So further ado, let's hop on over and go over all of these and let's get started. Woo! All right guys, starting over there, we have a bowl of prepared cinnamon and sugar and we have some honey crisp apples. Uh, she does say that you can use any apple of your preference, but she liked those because they're not as tart as a Granny Smith. Um, and she just preferred those. She used four. Hers were larger in my bag. They were smaller, so I have five that I'm going to peel over there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my apple core. And we'll, I'll show you the technique she used as I go along too. And then in the big bowl, we've got some flour. And to go along with the flour, we've got some sugar and some salt. And as far as our uh, wet ingredients, we've got some buttermilk. We've got an egg over there, some vanilla, oil, and then as utensils go. Now, I've got this big um, standalone frying pan, and it tends to run more true to temp than just my stovetop. I know it seems like overkill because of how big it is, but I'm going to use it for that fact that um, I think I can regulate more accurate heat in this than my stovetop, so that's why I'm going to go with that and the candy thermometer, obviously, to check the temp. And we're gonna need some oil, vegetable oil, for our Pam. And we're gonna use a spider to get out our apple rings so we don't break those. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get set up with our dry and our wet ingredients, and then we will go from there. Okay, so the first step is pretty easy. Um, I just have my bowl of flour, and I added the sugar and the salt to it. And I whisked it real quick, and now I'm going to set this off to the side because we don't need that right now. And I also moved the cinnamon sugar to the side. Now the wet ingredients, because it is the buttermilk, um, I'm going to wait um, to put the oil, the vanilla, and the egg in there until we're ready to mix the wet with the dry and to coat the apples. And then I'm going to go ahead and work on the apples. And I'm going to um, get the apple core out. And um, we're going to core that as we go along, and I'll show you that once we get there. So I'm going to set that out, and I'm also going to get um, a potato peeler to peel the apples, because we need to keep those whole. So I'm going to get the potato peeler out, I'm going to start peeling the apples, and then um, I will come back once that is all done. So we'll be back. Alright guys, we are back. Our oil is up to temp, which is at 360. And now we're going to move on to our apples. I have one apple. I'm going to work one at a time. The other apples I have sitting on a plate. And it's covered with um, a damp paper towel that has just a tiny bit of lemon juice so they don't green. Uh, not green. <laughs> brown. Duh. And I have this propped up on a little <laughs> my cookie cutter tub. So you guys can see. Right now it's kind of... But it's just me, like I said, so I'm trying to work with what I, <laughs> what I got. So... As you can see, we still have our wet back here. Um, I'm going to wait until I got these done and then mix that and then come together. So what we're going to do, as we go along, we're going to take our apple core 
and we are going to scoop out as we go along the core and scoop that out and set that on the side and we're going to make our slices um, a third inch thick. Now she says not to make them too small because um, they tend to disintegrate in the batter and um, as they cooked. So we're going to make them about that thick and we are going to core as we go along because as you can see um, it's all flat still. So as we go along we're going to keep taking the core out and that's how we are going to get our apple rings. So we're just going to truck along and keep coring as need be so we can get those rings and leave out the core. So I'm just going to keep going along with the rest of the apples and keep cutting them that thickness. And you want to, like anything else, you want to keep them the same width so they cook evenly. It's kind of hard to do while on this, but we'll make it work. I didn't get the core out of all that, so I'm just going to press in. Oh, that works nice. It. Oh, perfect. Ta -da! And they're not all going to be even, you know, the same. Well, not exactly the same because, you know, it is what it is. But so I'm going to keep going on these and then we shall be back. It's a little, little apple. Look at that. Mm. <laughs> we'll be back. Woo. Okay, y'all. Let me tell you, that was a struggle. <laughs> First time peeling apples with potato peeler and then coring them. I've never used a core before, so um, it took me to like the last apple to get it finally figured out. But here are the apples, and some are thicker, some are a little thinner. So you know, hey, we're gonna work with it. So you know, there's our first thing for everything. So now we're ready for our wet ingredients. So we're gonna go ahead and add our oil. Now, like I always say. You want to get everything it is such a huge pet peeve of mine when I'm watching videos especially like I said last video tasty when they're like throwing everything in there and then it's all either over the counter or they pull the bowl away and there's like half of the ingredients left in there I'm like oh, but that's not the recipe because baking is such you know like a science and everything has to be exact measurements so it's like why that was the oil now I'm grabbing the vanilla putting all that in it's so hard to maneuver these so we got all I use really good quality vanilla too from Mexico so it's like don't waste it we got our egg that bad boy in there. Thank you, Chicky Baba, for providing that. Okay, all in. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a whisk. Really good whisk. Make sure that yolk is broke. All that good stuff. The oil. And curdle the curdle of the buttermilk. So odd. Grab our dry. And pour our wet into our dry. Grab our extremely freakish tiny little spatula. Yes, I know it's called spatula. I just make up funny words for everything. <laughs> And again, get every single thing out. And to me, it's like if you leave all of that, I mean, gosh, you're missing out on everything. So we're going to scrape all of this and bring our batter together. Then we're going to dunk our eggs and get those frying. So I'm going to mix this and then we're going to move over to the fryer with our apples and our batter. Alright guys, here is my setup. I've got my apples on a plate, I've got my batter, my oil, 
And over there I have a big plate with some paper towels that I'm going to dry them off. And then I have a small ball, ball, <laughs> bowl of cinnamon and sugar that I'm going to dip them in as soon as they come out of the oil. And it's very important that you put them in the cinnamon and sugar once they come out of the oil so it adheres to them. So I am going to go ahead and start dipping and see how it goes. And then I'll come back and I'll show you um, what they look like once I've got a few done. And then um, I'll show you uh, me dipping them as I go and see how it's going. <laughs> I guess you could say, Ooh. okay, see you in a bit. Oh, wish me luck. Mm -hmm. Okay guys, this is absolutely freaking incredible. This is working amazing. If you guys have issues with your stove top running not correct temp, this is amazing. We got this from Walmart and it could not be m more incredible as far as holding its temp. It's a rapid skillet and from Dash. Yeah, it was only like $38 and this thing is huge. I don't know. Is it 12 inch, 11 inch? It's huge, but it's holding its temp. And I was able to do two, four, six and a half. And it was just incredible. And guys, look at those. Incredible. So I highly recommend that if you have issues with your stove top too. And it could not be easier, this recipe. Laura, you are a doll. I adore you. So I'm just literally taking the apples and it's going to get messy so you know it's okay sorry you can't get the batter in but I'm just dunking it in once dunking it in twice and I'm grabbing it through the hole because who you know it's always a pet peeve when you don't get that batter shaking it off gently and just letting it go in there and just keep I'm just gonna rock them out because that temp didn't drop once with all of those in there so that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just taking them, making sure they're coated. And the thicker ones, I'm making sure that I coat them even more because you still want, you know, all of that batter. So I'm just soaking them. I'm probably leaving a little extra on there too because, you know, like I said, when you go to the carnival, you like that batter on there. And then I'm using two chopsticks. Chopsticks? What am I? thinking I don't know skewers two long skewers to flip them and I was like hey I could be just as cool as the my husband's home so he's helping me yay there he is <laughs> so I'm using the two big skewers to flip them and I was like you know what I've seen that in videos I want to be cool like them <laughs> so that was my excuse to try to be cool see so in here I already have two four six seven and the temp hasn't even dropped so I'm probably going to add two more. And you know, when I was coring, I kind of got some oopsies, but it worked just as fine. Because I did a, another one that was just a teeny bopper, and it worked wonderfully. So that's what I'm going to keep doing, and we'll be back when they're all done. Woohoo! Okay, y'all. So I am done, and I got a whole tray like this of them. Of course, I got the little doodads down here. They deserve love, too. So, and I went ahead and cut into one regular and one half, just so you can see the inside. They are absolutely beautiful. And my husband said he will try one. So while he does that, then I'll just go ahead and tell you, um, th this was absolutely incredible. It smells like fall and oil and oil. It smells like oil. Um, it's really good. It tastes like an apple pie. Like a cinnamon apple pie is what it tastes like. That is incredible. They were a lot of fun. And she also said... Okay. No, I'll take another. <laughs> she said they are good with ice cream too, but we don't have ice cream. But in all honesty, who needs ice cream? Sorry, not much of a talker. No. <laughs> Thank you. But very good. <laughs> no, he's not much of a talker. But um, absolutely incredible. So much easy, easier to do than, in my opinion, an apple pie. Um... I'm a fan of that, but I am a sucker for making pumpkin pies. I'll be honest with you there. Um, they're not a big fan of apple pies. Um, any, any fruit pies, to be honest with you, they're not big on the texture of the fruit and pies, you know, the slime consistency. 
So I think these are going to be a staple. And I can honestly see putting these in like a milkshake. I think that would be a good thing to do to use these. But this was absolutely so much fun to make. You saw the ingredients. It was incredible. It came together so quick. Um, so I will definitely be making these again, um, fall or not. <laughs> this is so much fun. I mean, it, they are deep fried, I know. Not the healthy, healthiest things, but um, once in a great while, absolutely. Um, it, it just smells incredible. And I have my cinnamon apple candle burning back there. So it's just the spirit. I love the spirit of fall. It's my favorite. So, and it, as you can tell in the window back there, it's gloomy. So, I love it. It's perfect. So, thank you guys again for watching another episode of Should You Bake It. Tomorrow's going to be another one. <laughs> Next week, I will get to another Make It. I will. I will get to a Make It. But, I have to say, you know, there's just so many things out there. Now, this one wasn't a pumpkin, but it is an apple. <laughs> so, I think these are so much fun. These were just incredible. I hope you guys give it a go. I will link all of her, um, Laura Vitale's, all of her um, links, social media down below, uh, all the exact ingredients for everything down below as well. And thank you guys so much again for watching. Stay tuned for another one, and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.